Hello, everyone. We are here for the icon. I had such high expectations for this. Such high. Really? It's like I, the iconic. Like you thought it was going to be good, or you were just curious. Like I thought it was going to be good. Oh, <laughs> I did not. I, I mean, I, I expected like iconic bodice ripper type of thing, you know. But it wasn't. It it was it's a bodice ripper. It was. Yeah. When he assaulted her, he ripped her bodice. That's, that's what, <laughs> like, that's what bodice ripper means. It just means assault. <laughs> I yeah. thought it would have so much more to the characters in the plot. Like, okay. I thought it would just be like this sweeping, iconic romance. And I was so bored the entire time. I wasn't bored. I wasn't bored. Oh, m maybe we should say our ratings first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, well, people are here. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Let hello. Us your vibes. It's always vibes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I am well. <laughs> I'm quite well. <laughs> okay, hold on. Go ahead and say your ratings. Go ahead, Lisey. Okay. Well, I'm still kind of conflicted. Like, it was both good and bad, so I'm just going to average it to three stars. Like, I did like some parts. I was kind of surprised. I was hooked. You know, I couldn't stop reading, but it's still not the best story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wasn't, I was never bored. Like, I was still interested in the book. I think as a romance, I would have to give it, like, one star. But I was telling Jessica, like, if I read it as if it was, like, a historical fiction and it was just, like, the, the heroine's, like, story, then maybe I would have rated it higher. But for it to be a romance, i just give it one star. Yeah, that, I would say that. Four stars, wow. I love that for you. I love that for you, truly. Wait, so your final <laughs> rating is one star? Yeah, my final rating is one star. Uh, Lacey, I'm so I'm happy you guys liked it. Wait, what? Lacey, what was your final rating? It was three stars. It's, okay, sorry. It cut me out for a second. Um, I will be honest. I have this much left <laughs> of the book. Um, it is 40 pages. But how it is now, um, I like nothing happened in this plot. Mm -hmm. For 440 pages, nothing happened. Um, and I would say like 2.5. Okay. I thought like, he would at least be redeemable, but he's not. No, no he's not. not. But I mean, I didn't really see it as like he had to be redeemed, you know? Like, why um, did she love him? Yeah. Trauma. It's kind of, yeah, trauma. Really? It's like she's she's resigned to love him. But yeah. I thought it was still really interesting. Like, that, that whole thing was interesting to me. Did I believe in the romance? No. But I still, like, kind of enjoyed myself. Like very... Yeah, that's why I'm like, I was never bored. I was interested in like where the story was going. The mm -hmm. only time that I was like, okay, maybe this is a little like boring was when they were on the ship, like going to America. I was like, okay, we can cut some of this out a little so bit. Much potential. But like, I was just fascinated by the yeah. hero. Like he was so high and cold and hilariously ridiculous that I was like, what in the world? Y'all was dropping. So I wasn't necessarily bored, but I wasn't impressed by by the hero for sure. Yeah, I'm the same as Justin. I did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It, but it is a romance, which is why I gave it one star. But like, even for the plot, I'm like, okay, so they meet in London. They just hang out. She gets pregnant. Cool. Now they're on a ship and they're just hanging out on the ship. Nothing cool happens but a storm. Like, okay, those always happen. And then... They're just on his plantation and they're just hanging out. Yeah, but I kind of like that. Like, I personally like the pacing, the slow pacing, because it's not like they can just instantly fall in love. Like she has to take time to like get used to everything, be a mom at 17, 18. Like the slow pacing made sense for the story. So yeah. I was like, okay, I don't mind like going through the day to day stuff of I, it. I hate that in romances. Yeah. Oh, this book would absolutely be problematic today. I was telling Jessica that I started annotating it. I gave up. But I started annotating it because I was just annotating, like, the hero's red flags and how many times he assaulted her. And I think I have one, two, three, four, five times before I gave up. She was literally about to be assaulted by a man 
Her husband comes up, tears him off of them, and she's like, oh, wait, no, but now I'm going to be assaulted by my husband. And I'm like, exactly. I don't know. Also, like, I just, like, compare this to, like, Sky O'Malley, which was just so epic. And Sky right. was such a cool heroine. Mm -hmm. She did nothing. She had no personality, nothing she liked to do. She just sat around and let things yeah. happen to her. She had no I felt, I felt really, really bad for her for sure. I feel like she had a lot of like internalized misogyny because there was even times where she blamed herself, like basically saying like she needs to be more grateful for him and she needs to like be more demure to like not make him upset. And like it was her fault for not being thankful or it was her fault for like tempting him. And I was like, oh, baby, sweet, sweet baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did listen um, to the audiobook and I thought I okay, audiobook, I thought it was a good audiobook. The narrator actually did a good job. I yeah. yeah. I I started with the audio and then I had I had a hard time getting into it. So I read the first chapter, the ebook, and then I went back and finished the rest in audio. And it was really good. I did like the audio. And I like they didn't cut anything out because I was flipping mm -hmm. like between them. I started with the audio, then I went to the paperback, then I went to the ebook, and then I went to the audiobook, and then I went to the paperback. So I was like flipping through all of them and um everything was the same. Like it didn't cut anything, which was nice. But I'm wondering what they explained about the time period. But she didn't stand up for herself. She had moments where she tried, and then I think she got scared by him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think she was scared to say anything. But I know in this time period, it's like they like the strong man who goes after what he wants, who just, mm -hmm. like, ravishes you and sweeps you off your feet kind of thing. And that's definitely what this had. So I can see why, like, that kind of – I mean, that's why there's all those problematic – romances because it is the man just like taking what he wants but like literally every single time he saw her he's just like i just can't help myself i'm just overcome with lust i just can't control myself and i'm just like yeah. okay <laughs> but that's and always it's interesting to have it in dual point of views to like hear his aspect a little mm -hmm. bit because he genuinely felt like he did nothing wrong like yeah. he was like <laughs> this is her fault she is a witch like he really felt like he was not assaulting her. He felt like that tiny smidge of remorse when he took her virginity. But then he was like, yeah. you know what? I'll just make you my mistress. It's fine. It yeah. happened. We're going to move on. Was like someone was going to do it anyway, so why not me? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. um... <laughs> they were supposed... I mean, I guess that's like Shanna, how she was annoying. But, like, well, at least she did things. Like, she tried. She yeah. just was like a limp noodle. She did nothing. She just like maybe it's because the women from those ages were doing too much. <laughs> they just didn't want to have any responsibilities. They didn't want to have any like you know. I'm just gonna sit here and be pregnant. Just ravish me. Okay. Just take me against my will. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she was unlikable. She just didn't have a lot of depth to her. No. Yeah. Nothing for sure. For sure. Yeah, it was interesting to hear his point of view for sure. And like, that's why I had such high expectations for this. Because it's like so iconic just for the romance genre itself. So that's why I expected more. Right. I want a documentary on this. Like, I want to know, like, how did a publisher decide to pick this up? And what were people's like genuine reaction when they picked it up? Because they loved it, obviously. It was like this huge sensation. So like, what about it? Was it just a lack of options or it was so different from what was being published in that time? I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, it was considered the first. So yeah. it was like the pioneer of it. And then that was definitely like, since there was nothing like it, they probably appreciated it more. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Wait, I wonder, is Wolf and the Dove the same? Or is it better? I this still want to read that first time yeah. reading her. I still want to okay. read that one. Her aunt was just terrible. Good gracious. It's just like the the last months. I was getting flashbacks. 
to like all the family being horrible to her. I literally in the beginning of this book, I was like, is this like a Cinderella retelling with like That's the weird <laughs> where she's like wearing these like ratty gowns? I was I like, is this a Cinderella retelling? Okay, but also this this is a fair point mm-hmm. because like Fifty Shades is not written well. Yeah. I can barely read that book. Correct. But it really did. It was just like people were reading this straight up erotica book for Fifty Shades at least. Mm-hmm. And they liked that. And it was like, oh, the cool thing to be reading that. And so maybe this one, like with how just taboo it was, it was like the cool thing to be reading. And that really like blew it up. Because like, do people like think Fifty Shades is a good book? At the time, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure there's still people who stand for it. <laughs> like the story, I mean, like the the movies are fun. The like the plot is fine, and like the idea, whatever. But like just the writing itself was not good. Yeah, but, but I'm if that's not the only BDSM book you read, it like is scandalous and like opens you up to the genre. Yeah. So I guess that's, that's what, what it did. It was scandalous yeah. and opened you up to a whole new genre. Yeah, yeah, it was. It went viral. Like it got so big. So yeah. I guess that's kind of what happened with this one yeah but i wonder are there any books like that we've seen after 50 because i was thinking like colin hoover but i don't people weren't reading that because of like the taboo factor maybe haunting adeline that's what's happening with that right now it's like the one that's like oh my gosh did you read that and you see what happened in it and like we really liked it mm-hmm. i don't know yeah that's true. That's why I was like, I didn't dislike the writing. I didn't even dislike the storytelling or mm-hmm. like the audiobook. It was just as a romance, I couldn't get yeah, behind just, the, just the content itself. Yeah. Yeah. So if it was a, like, if I read this going in thinking it was a historical fiction, I don't think I would rate it one star, if that makes sense. Like, it was still interesting. The writing itself wasn't bad. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. So I guess that was pretty scandalous when people read that and had like on page sex scenes. Yes, definitely. I'll have to look at this. I look at Goodreads ratings and I didn't see that. I saw Justin's rating and I was like, Justin, you liked it. Four stars. Okay. Oh, it Is was the Wolf and the Dog part of the same series. I think so. Wolf and the Dog came first. Oh. Are you sure? Yeah, it's inside the cover of this. Okay. I think so. I can look. It says 72 for Flame and then 74 for Wolf. Yeah, uh, I think Flame is, Flame is her debut. Then this must not be the first edition. What does the first edition look like? This one? Because um, mine says 1972. Yeah. This one. Hmm. That's on the Wikipedia page, the white one or beige. Yeah. Oh, but it does say over 1 million copies in print on the cover. So that wouldn't be the first edition. Seventeenth printing of this book. Damn, that's crazy. People were eating this up. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It was the first romance to be published in paperback first. So maybe um, cost might have helped it too. Like a cheaper book to Mm -hmm. buy. That's true. Oh yeah. Jessica, you have the first cover. I have that cover somewhere and it has red sprayed edges, but I don't know where. I think Jessica froze. Is Jessica frozen? Yeah, Yeah, I'm back up. It keeps on kicking me out. It should be good. Mine does have the these sprayed edges. Is that what your has? Mm-hmm. That's why I thought this was a first edition, but it says it's a 17th printing at the bottom of it. So this might Maybe be like first printing it. with had didn't have that tagline on the cover. Because they do that, yeah. I don't know. Because Wikipedia, the the one the cover there, it doesn't have the one million. Okay. But I think it's interesting with with this because like this for, to me was 
really well written. Like, it's really easy to read because we've read a lot of historical romances from like the 70s and 80s that are just so bogged down and hard to read. And yes. this was just very easy to get into. Yes. I agree. I agree. It wasn't dense or anything. No. no. Yeah. Which I think she's a good storyteller for sure. Yeah. Um, it's I just for us personally, like the hero was horrific. Um, well, did anything for her except get her pregnant yeah and i was did not know this was like a pregnancy book like a surprise pregnancy no never, yeah, i didn't know that either i went in with no expectations so when I, when he assaulted her and then he freaking owned a plantation i messaged lacy and i was like be so fucking for real right now like this <laughs> <laughs> he does pay his employees like they made yes. sure he said that though and i was like right oh, Samantha. Aggressive. <laughs> if it's on a plantation he plays pays his employees See, they like made sure to put that in the book which i think was interesting for a book that came out in the 70s yeah i was pretty sure they weren't actually slaves they like the author tried to make them good you know in that in that sense basically yeah. yeah yeah and they were but yeah he owned a plantation which i was like oh. Yeah. But I mean, this is the same time period. I mean, I guess the ones were later of all of those Native American romances. Oh, and like, that's true. Yeah. There was the, I forget what her tagline was. There was that one author that she's like known for them. And she's like, she aspires to just write about every single kind of tribe because she just loves them so much. And I was like, this is so bad. <laughs> like, this is so bad. I no who that is. God, I forget who it was, but she, this, all she wrote was Native Americans. That's crazy. Okay, so Nora Roberts said in an interview once that she started writing because most of the heroines at the time were just secretaries. I mean, that's true. They were doing something revolutionary for the genre, and that's what drew people to the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily, like, the most exciting story. It's interesting, but... Yeah, like, going into this, although it wasn't my favorite historical, I still have, like, an immense amount of respect for her as a writer because she was, like, the building blocks of historical romances, for sure. I just think now historical romances have developed so much. Well, the authors, they write the reflections of their times, too. Yeah. So it's always going to be different, like, with each generation. Mm -hmm. And, like, what was happening in the 70s and 80s, even into, like, the 2000s, is women were treated like this. So, that's I mean, that is fair. And yeah. like, but that's also why, like, some historical romance readers get so mad at the modern historical romances because they're so used to this kind of historical mm -hmm. romance where women didn't have any autonomy that they think that's all there was. So that annoys me though. When that's that's interesting. Yeah. I thought we read one that did a really good job of, like, being bodice ripper but consensual still. Like, they made it clear, like, the heroine didn't want to want it, but, like, she really did want it. And, like, that's what it was. And they kind of teetered on that in here where, yeah. like, she was, like, mad at herself for wanting him. But in the beginning, she was, like, clear cut, like, no, what is happening to me? Yeah. I, don't I mean, know. I kind of appreciated that, too. It wasn't, like, the author was trying to glorify the rape like she didn't want it that was it right yeah are you thinking of the the pirate's pleasure one by heather graham am i because i thought it was more recent oh okay it might be well and i also like i don't think sky o'malley had any assault scenes by one of the heroes one of the heroes no it was like always the villains that were the ones doing the assaulting the heroes yeah. were very respectful of her Oh, yeah, they were, like, that obsessed was in the same with time her. period, right? Wasn't that in the 70s? Yeah, it was. And they were obsessed with her. Like, they wanted to, like, worship the ground she walked on. <laughs> but, when like, was, Sally was so cool. When was it written? I'm looking at that up now. I, I honestly... No, you do. I honestly think Sky Mally kind of ruined us for any other historical, because in our minds, we're like, nothing is going <laughs> to be that crazy. Have no. you guys read... The Lisa Kleypas one, Where Passions, Passion Leads. Because that's mm -hmm. the book that reminded me a lot. Like, when I was reading Flame in the Flower, it was reminding me a lot of Where Passion Leads. Because the hero also assaults the heroine at the beginning. But the difference is that the hero in Lisa Kleypas, he actually feels remorse about it. And the entire rest of the book, he tries to make up for it. So, 
I can see the inspiration. It's just that Lisa Kleypas try to make him a little better. Yeah. I'm I think there was like, like that. I think there was a part where the hero was like, this is happening. You're just going to have to get over it. And once you get over it, we'll be happy. And that's exactly what happened. Like, she was just like, okay, this is my life. Happily ever yeah. after. No autonomy. Okay, yeah. Sky Omel, I just saw. 1980. Okay. So a couple years. Like, five, eight Eight years? Eight years, yeah. Okay, but this is true, but, like, there were – a lot of women were okay with it. Like, that was just mm – -hmm. so I, I feel like they would probably want to read about books with heroines with more agency. Wouldn't they have? I don't know. But would that be received by, like, a publisher? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see um, okay. Oh, we didn't even talk about the mystery plot line. Jess, can you pull up the character list for me? Because it now – We'll get into like the actual plot. We have notes. <laughs> we have notes. Um, okay, so we have our characters. Heather, she's our heroine. She was very meek. Nothing really to say about her. Then we had Brandon, our hero. He's an American sea captain. He also owns a plantation. We didn't say it, but in the beginning of the book, Heather ends up meeting somebody else named William, who is supposed to like help her get a like good marriage and a job but yeah. it's just a ploy to like get her alone because he assaults her and heather ends up killing william stabs him with like a fruit knife which i was very curious how like how sharp you know that's like okay anyways um <laughs> so she's running away from william thinking like people are gonna chase her like the magistrate and like the police officers are gonna like find her and like cut her down so she ends up meeting two people who work for Brandon thinking like they, this is the police officers like taking her to get arrested, but they're actually taking her to Brandon because they mistake her as a prostitute. So that's how she ends up sleeping or gets assaulted by Brandon because he thinks that she is a prostitute. She gets pregnant from that night and like escapes him. But like months later when they realize that she's pregnant, um, th her family forces her into like a marriage uh, because she's pregnant. Okay, caught up <laughs> of all of that. So then um, after she gets pregnant, they decide to like go home together to back to his plantation. And that's where like the mystery plot line kind of comes in. So somebody else take it away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, the comments are saying um, the so, like, whole twist to it was that Heather didn't actually kill William. Like he, he was dying, but yeah. um, hint did the final blow and he's the one blackmailing her yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but like when i tell you i have 40 pages left of this book and none that just started happening of a 430 page book the suspense plot is 30 pages i mean i i don't remember <laughs> it being way too fast though i was like dang this is this is getting intense yeah i liked it well I but mean, like Oh, go ahead. You didn't get to the part where, like, the uh, one of the girls is found dead? Yeah, but then they're like, oh, I don't know who killed her. And then, like, time went by. Like, they didn't oh, okay. bother. Like, the, and nothing happened from it. And then the guy shows up. And, like, that's the part I'm at. But, like, so Justin had said it's kind of like um, Amanda Quick. But, like, Amanda Quick's books are so good, like, mm -hmm. plot-wise and pacing-wise. So, like, I don't know if I would even consider this a mystery if it only happens in the last... 20% not even of the book yeah because the really quick books feel like adventure romances because yeah. the mystery is the entire plot line it's not just a like plot twist it's literally yes. like in yeah, yeah exactly it's just a plot twist mm -hmm. yeah which maybe if it was more that had to do with that like throughout maybe if it was like oh she kept on seeing the guy throughout the plot like someone's after me actually after me that would have been cool but it just kind of like she mentioned it and then forgot about it until the end yeah. So when she gets home, there's like these two women in the town, Louisa and Sybil, who are just like jealous of her. I think Louisa, well, Louisa was betrothed to Brandon. Yeah. It did drag for a little bit after she gave birth the whole ball section. Yeah. The ball was very random. It did feel random for sure. I did so, like the but yeah, they're jealous of her and like giving her a hard time. But then both of them are found dead and Brandon ends up getting like accused of their murder. But she's able to give like an alibi to where he was that night by the way if it was me i would have been like yeah he fucking did it arrest his ass so I could 
no, we'll get it <laughs> at this point she's in love with him so she's not yeah. gonna lie, so yeah. she's locked too- up also. <laughs> missed her chance oh my god what a plot twist that would have been <laughs> i know right but the police kind of believed her <laughs> really easily they're like oh okay we'll just go now well, because she's a woman she's like this demure little woman like why would she be lying to them you know that's probably how they saw it yeah uh but it turns out that brandon obviously did not kill those women it was the guy thomas killing them and kind of like setting everything up because he was blackmailing um heather for killing william gosh that got so convoluted <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that actually, that whole plot line I thought was interesting because the entire time that they were like on the ship, I was thinking like, nobody's going to ask why this guy died. Like eventually someone is going to figure out he died. Well, stabbed. Yeah. Yeah. Or stabbed. She didn't kill him, but stabbed. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of thinking that the aunt would come back and get some sort of revenge because she loved her brother. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't hear anything from the aunt. And also, did we ever, he- for like a split second, I thought it was the guy that loved her, that wanted to marry her. I thought it was him killing those girls. He just left. Like, there was a lot of potential for really cool things. Yeah. But it was just like, oh, no, nope, they're gone. I mean, to be fair, it is her second novel she ever wrote. So. That's a good point. I wonder how, when, when did Shanna come out? That book was just so fun. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> but like all the adventure like they got um married and then she thought that he was killed but then he actually wasn't and then like she made him get kidnapped and then like she got kidnapped so then he's like i gotta go save her (laughs) no i hated that book (laughs) like order of kathy woodwest books because Shanna came out in, 19, in 1977. I think I would prefer this one over Shanna, to be honest with you. This one says The Wolf and the Dove came out in 74. Yeah, that's what, that's what we've been saying. Flame is her debut. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Wait, that's I, why was I getting in my head then? So this was her first book ever. Yes, his, this okay. was her debut. Okay. Uh, that was backwards in my mind. Okay, well, that makes sense if she's, like, kind of introducing things and then just, like, kind of, like, they would cheat her off and she's like, oh, I don't need that anymore. And so, like, more fleshed out, like, could, like, circle back with things. You liked it better than Shanna? So did I. <laughs> the shock. No. Shanna was I, so I genuinely hated Shanna. Like, the entire book. So, Flame of the Flowers first, then Wolf of the Dove, then Beyond the Kiss, and then Shanna. What did someone say was that they really liked? Was it the Ashes book? If you've read her, let us know your favorite book by her. Yes, please let us know. But I mean, a lot of people did like this one. They gave it four stars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shanna is your favorite. You really like. Okay, a lot of people like Shanna. It was so fun. Like, I need that drama and the action to get behind it. This one, I just don't like it when they just sit around. And she literally sat around the entire book. And then she got sick because she refused to sleep in the same bed as him on the ship. <laughs> it did kind of give me Outlander vibes, that did. Like, them traveling. I don't know. Maybe it's because Shanna has an unsufferable heroine versus this one. I just felt bad for a heroine. And, like, yeah, the hero's trash, but, like, men are trash, you know? So it's, like, kind of expected. So for like, I don't know. <laughs> And Shanna, he, like, went after her. He's like, I gotta save her. She's stupid. I know. But I, save her. <laughs> I know. And she was trash. I would have left her ass numerous times. Pushed her off the ship is what I would have done. I could not stand Shanna. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, then. Interesting. Very interesting. I feel like there have been historical romances with Confederate flags on the cover. I think I remember, like, on the back <laughs> cover, like, in the art. Yeah. <laughs> Back on the shelf. Okay. That's a choice. I mean, but like, I guess, I mean, similar to like all of the rape in this one, people didn't see it as a problem when they were writing it. 
Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. hindsight is twenty twenty. Sometimes, yeah, don't hold well. I've only read Shanna in this one. Yeah, we've only read Kathleen Woodowis with you guys for our for our book clubs. Oh, that was one of the questions. Uh, would you guys read more from the author? I totally would, just because yeah, I find so it fascinating. Be another Judith McNaught situation. No. <laughs> well, how many <laughs> Judith books have you read? A lot. Like, <laughs> I've almost read her entire backlist. As much as you can't stand her. No, because, so that one is just like, every time I read a book by Judith McNaught, people are like, oh, you read the wrong one. You need to read this one. This one's really good. And I'm just like gaslit into reading it. But Kathleen Woodowis, I feel like it's a piece of history. And I'm just fascinated to know, like, what was the first historicals that were coming out. Um, so that's why I want to read more from her. I mean, especially comparing it to what's happening to the historical romance genre now, yeah. where it definitely feels like they're moving as far away from this as they possibly can. And mm -hmm. it's kind of sad. Like, Yeah, I do wonder if anyone is still writing, like, in this style, you know? Like any indie authors, are they are they still doing it? Because like it's who definitely not traditional traditionally published books. No, I mean like even Scarlett Peckham, she's definitely like very modern woman. Um, Diana Quincy's the same way. I'm thinking of who's still even writing. Erica Ridley's the same way. They're very like progressive modern women. Um, yeah. But like, did it? Do we even know what happened to Lisa Claypus? No. She just, she's just gone. I don't know. Wait, wait, that was pure pain in Lacey's voice. Yeah, I do feel pure pain over it. Oh my God. Like I her and Tessa Dare just writing. don't even, they're just not writing, which is bizarre because at least for Tessa, she stopped writing in like the prime of historical romance. Yeah. She really did. It's a, it's a very missed opportunity. Yeah, well, I mean, she's still writing. She just said she was on a reading slump and she would go to like book signings and stuff too. So she was doing something. Lisa Three Clay years. Was like, Huh? Three years. I, th that's what she said. She said that this was just the next one in like the wall, the wall, whatever, Wallflower Wager yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. Was just like the hardest book for her to write that it put her in a slump. Yeah, but she would yeah. go to book signings and she would post on social media. Lisa Clavis literally fell off the universe. Yeah, because she doesn't post on social media. She yeah. used to maybe post once a year, but we haven't gotten any updates for maybe two years now since her last release. So I'm sad. Yeah, I mean, because Sarah McLean's still writing, but hers, I don't really love. They're a different kind of style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and i mean like haunting adeline is popular so like we do have like dark romances that are popular and i feel like these are just in the historical setting as dark romances where the heroes yeah, are but, heroines. But most dark romances i feel like even still are like consensual non-consent true that wasn't well maybe that wasn't a term back then i guess well i mean like so i'm also thinking like untouchable by sam mariano that beginning was just too much i was like how could you redeem a hero who does this <laughs> so awful does he flat up us alter she is saying no and he's like mm, no yeah who would like that book <laughs> <laughs> that's like one of my favorite books ever i'm awful Um, yeah. Let's see. Is there really no historical dark romance out there? I mean, this, I guess, would be. Yeah. Like, is, is, is this considered dark romance? Like, historical dark romance? I don't know what. Just old school, right? Well, I would say old school bodice ripper. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, bodice ripper is literally, like, struggling woman as you rip her bodice. Like, that's what I think of. It's not... 100% consensual when you yeah. do the bottle stripper. Yeah. So. The only one is Pam Godwin, and that's... Yeah. Oh, oh that was dark. That is a dark, yeah. And I mean, there is historic romances that have, like, BDSM, too. Like, Nicola Davidson has some. Those are all indie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to think, oh, like, who, who is still writing that wrote even in, like, the 2000s? Golden Angel there. writes crazy bonkers historicals, but she's indie as well. Who? Golden Angel. 
the the only one still writing but not in the same genre is Jane Ann Krentz, um, Amanda Quick. So she's still Kat writing, Martin, but just not. Right? Huh? Cat Martin, is she still writing suspense? Um, I don't remember if she had anything recent, but she did write suspense. Yeah. Well, well there was that wave of historical romance authors switching to romantic suspense because the publisher. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Julie Garwood passed, but her last book was not not the best. And she didn't even continue writing historicals, right? Historicals, no. And, like, Beverly Jenkins isn't writing historicals right now. Her last one was a while ago. Mm-hmm. She just had a new Christmas romance come out. Yeah. Um, like, Suzanne Enoch, <laughs> she's still writing. Um, I think she's more from, like, the 2000s. But hers are now trad with the illustrated cover. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is shocking because hers were always like the the normal cover. But I don't know. I think it would also just be interesting to see what historical romance authors were inspired by Kathleen Woodowis. That would be cool. Yeah. And I, non-historical. I feel like there's a lot of contemporary authors who were inspired by her. Who read a lot of historical. Yeah. yeah. Well, like even, yeah, so many different authors were inspired by her. I know like Sam Costa even said she was inspired by like original bodice rippers. And she writes monster romances. So, um, interesting. The bonkers plots depends on your definition. Yeah, I mean, every everyone has different definitions of what's dark for sure. I mean, also, I feel like I get a lot of my historical stuff from fantasy now because a lot of it it like feels very historical. It just has magic in it. Like, mm, yeah, I get those. I remember Beverly Jenkins teased dragons potentially in like one little novella, and that was it. And we were like, can you bring that back, please? <laughs> it was a fantasy or what? It was like a novella. I don't even remember what it was. But we were like, can you write that, please? <laughs> Lorraine Heath is still writing. I don't know if Teresa Medeiros is. Lauren Heath historicals are fucking bonkers. But they're good. They're so good. They're like the angsty kind of historicals that I love. Yeah. That a lot of them today aren't. It's just hard to explain. Like, they just feel so contemporary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not, like, this felt, I don't know, I like, if I would say this felt contemporary, the writing felt very accessible. Mm -hmm. But the plot was still good. Like, engaging, at least. Not, like, what a lot of them are now, which I don't, I don't even know how to explain how they are now. Yeah, but I think that is the, just, like, the general market because illustrated covers had such a wave. Contemporary romances had such a wave that the historic romance genre is just struggling a little bit because it's not what people are picking up. And as much as I love Bridgerton, I think Bridgerton genuinely ruined historical romances with the the way they switched their covers and just, like, the marketing of it. So Yeah. But, I mean, even just the books themselves, though. Like, why do they have to change the writing inside when they change the cover? I think it. I think it's the pressure of writing something that's like popular like that, and maybe even just publishers pushing that type of romance. It's watered down historical. It's not. Yeah, like, I don't know. I'm just assuming. I don't know nothing about the industry. <laughs> well, they are like moving away from historicals, like because what mm -hmm. Beverly Jenkins like insinuated. She never like came out and actually said. It. I don't know what she has said to you when you met her, but it was basically like they are not supporting historical romance authors right now and pushing for other things. Yeah. And even like just the marketing of it, like you walk into you walk into Target, historicals are on the back shelf. Like yeah. the back of the back shelf. It's because these it, stores don't want mass markets anymore. Which yeah. is so annoying. Oh my yeah. god. And then we had that whole freaking thing of switching to the mass uh, max. Yeah. Like what the hell? They just yeah, it got screwed over real bad after the um, pandemic. Elizabeth Hoy also disappeared. Oh yeah. Her her new one got pushed back like multiple times i think there's a new release date for it i don't know if it's actually set but i mean tessa dare has a new release date <laughs> but yeah. yeah i agree mm -hmm. that's i feel like that's also why i just don't really read new historical romances anymore if i want to pick up historical i go to like older stuff Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. <laughs> they are though. Like targets, Target doesn't have them. 
They don't even get them in stock at my Barnes and Noble. I was like, why don't you have this new release? And like, oh, it just depends on what we get sent. I'm like, yeah. I would think it was like one of Lorraine Heath's new ones. It was like release week. And I was like, where is this? It came out. I'm like, oh, we didn't get it. Barnes and Noble didn't get Lorraine Heath. That's How crazy. are they supposed to sell their books if the publishers aren't sending them to the bookstores? Yeah. It's just yeah. like really annoying. Like they say there's a problem, but I'm like, but you're not actually trying to sell them. And mm-hmm. I also see like marketing wise, so much more marketing is put into contemporary romances over historicals anyways. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why aren't you sending these out to people? Like, why aren't you pushing the release instead of putting all your money behind all these other releases? And like marketing as well. And I'll try to word this. So <laughs> I don't upset anyone, but uh, people who are reading historical romances for content too, like not obviously like us and stuff like that, but I feel like it has always been a trend for people who don't even read romances, who don't like romances. They're consistently rating romances low. They'll pick up a book like this just to trash it just to have like a trendy title or a trendy video. And it's like, okay, what is the intent of that? Because like, you obviously don't like romances. And it's just, it's like a, it's just a trash it. Does that make sense? So then it just continues to feed the negativity into historic romances. Yeah. I love when I open a historical and I see these yeah. in the back where they're like, write to the author at this address. And I love it. I love it. Too. And then you can see like the other kinds of historicals that you can also order with it. Yeah. Literally in the back. So I have my Joanna Lindsay one here and it says you can mm-hmm. fill this out and rip it off and oh. order. Oh, mine too. It says it right here. That's yeah. so funny. Send check or money order. Here are the prices. Oh, and there's a number to call. I kind of want to call and see what it says. I don't think a service number. <laughs> what would they do, though, if you pop this in the mail? Yeah. Has anyone come Your across friend? a book where that part is cut out, though? I think mine are all just intact. Did mine anyone too. actually do those? I don't know. <laughs> this one has it, too. Um. Oh, it's for Joanna Lindsay's books. Mine is for Elizabeth Lowell. I think. Um, I also love when I buy books at secondhand stores, people leave their bookmarks in the books. So I'll find like magnetic bookmarks. I'll find like old receipts of people like just stuffing it in there using it as bookmarks. And I save them because I just think it's so fascinating. My favorite used book find was an Elisa Clefus book. And there were some pages folded down like dog-eared. And Every one of them was a steamy scene. I was like, I got you, girl. I know what you're <laughs> That was great. It's like how people have a specific colored tab for spicy scenes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Samantha, I also thought you were going to say, though, that like marketing in general is geared towards non-romance readers because they're trying to get more people to read the genre. And I think that's oh, yeah. what they're doing with what we love is they're trying to make it so that people who don't read romance will like it. A romance book that's, like, more women's fiction than anything else. Absolutely, yes. That's exactly what Tay James said in her group. Um, Because people were complaining about their new Bloom covers. And she's like, these are literally not for you guys. These are for new readers. I'm trying to find, you know, people who have never read me. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're not going to pick up the original Madison K covers with the girl and the guys on the cover. Yeah. And, like, that's fair because, I mean, you still get, like, the two alternate covers. So, that one doesn't irk me as much. I was just saying because recently, I don't want to be mean, but recently I feel like I've seen so many videos where people who genuinely are not romance readers, like, they consistently, like, do not rate romance as high. They know that. They don't like the genre. Continuing to pick it up and trash it, it's just weird to me. It It gives such weird energy. Yeah. They know that romance is big and they know that they'll get views and clicks for it and they take advantage of it yeah I, I feel like it's pandering a little bit like they're literally just trying to ride the wave of like popular romances and romance readers but it, I don't know it just feels rude <laughs> I do think this makes a good point though of like and I mean especially like historical romances they don't feel as romantic like sweeping romances that right. are like just addictive that's why I usually I like turn to indie more because I feel like they do it better than what trad does. This is adorable. I love that. That is so freaking cute. 
I do also get annoyed at people who are like, "Ah, man on the cover, gross. And I'm like, you're gross. (laughs) My man covers alone. (laughs) Yeah, it's just interesting. I think it's just weird behavior. I mean, my Walgreens still has have, yeah, but yeah. Walg- Oh, you said Walmart, but Walgreens, I feel like, is the one place that I do see historicals actually a lot, mm-hmm. like new, like magazines and historicals, and I'm like, oh, I just love that wall. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting because Lacey gets a lot of the test ones. <laughs> yes, I get a lot I of tests. I, I want to see them. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't, but I do end up clicking on them sometimes, and that's probably why I see more of them. But I don't think I've ever gotten one. I get the test ads that Bloom does. Um, like they're they pick up a new, uh, a release, an indie author, and then they're testing out different kinds of covers uh-huh. um, to see which one would appeal more. I guess like if you click, the more clicks, the more appealing it is. I don't know what metrics they're using, but I see them all the time. So I sometimes, hey. Yeah, sometimes I'll see an author that got picked up, but they didn't, they haven't announced it yet. You know, I, I've never seen them. Where do you see them? You see them like on TikTok, Facebook? Facebook. Facebook, okay. And I mean, like, I get it. Bloom is definitely helping them, like, get more readers and, like, more visibility. And that just comes with changing the covers to fit the market. Which I guess is fine. And yeah. also, I'm I'm dumb. I say this very often uh, that I'm dumb because I am. And I was just thinking, like, what is up with these freaking flowers? But then someone was like, "It's Bloom Publishing flowers," and I was like, "Okay." That makes sense. <laughs> and the flowers are just in. I mean, like, it's a trend, which is annoying. But at least, like, when romances and historical romances got out of the bodice ripping covers the clinch covers, they at least did the step back. So like it had the discreet cover on there and it still has, oh. I, now it's just like, oh. Cause there's so many that uh, like Amanda Quick did that where it's like a crown or yeah. like a, a house, but then you opened it and it has the step back. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've only ever seen Bloom doing them though. Bloom and Sourcebooks, no other publishing company. Yeah. I love these covers. But I mean, I guess it's also nostalgic for us because we love romance and like we're not ashamed of it. And a lot of it is people and I don't know. Or we grew out we grew out of that, you know. I think we grew out of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, a lot of people grew up in romance, like when they read romance in the junior high and high school, like hiding it under their bed or whatever. So I feel like we def now that we like the genre, we're more into like the the covers. Um, but not like opposite of being negative. Then you have the authors who are actually leaning into the historic romance clinch covers, like um Megan Quinn. Megan Quinn just did her books, historical clinch covers. CM Costa yeah, has right. her monster romances clinch covers. Katie Roberts Katie has Robert. hers. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. the indie romance crowd. Yeah. I feel like they're like yeah. fighting, fighting the trends. Yeah, it's like Why? publishers say that they're following the trends, but they're part of creating the trends too. Yeah. Like Ooh. the Bridgerton cover. Oh, yeah. Good. Like Bridgerton created that head the ugliest, down. ugliest and covers people ever. Are like people are buying Bridgerton. Let's copy the covers. And those were the new covers. And so everybody started doing it. Like all the forever historicals mm-hmm. were looking like that. And I'm just like, I know. Stop it. I agree with this whole comment. This is absolutely true. Yeah. It was like the first of its Mm -hmm. kind. I mean, if I didn't have romance and I read this, I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is addicting and amazing. Yeah. So I can see why this became a sensation. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And but I will say though there are some like old historicals published before 2000 that we've read that were never problematic. They were always just yeah. So I think that's why we're just a little bit more picky because we have read ones that aren't problematic. Oh, they're so good. Yeah. I don't remember if I listened to that or not. 
I love I that. Love that. I love that. Yeah. But I think it's interesting, like the cover, the, like if this is the first cover, like I feel like it's, it looks like a romance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. Even in the back. It does the have a, like those gothic romance, not yeah, the gothic type of books, you know? It yeah. has that feel to mm -hmm. it. The giant blurring. I love like those gothic romance covers. They're so yeah. pretty. But like the art style. Yeah. Oh, look, his plantation is on the cover. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> it's by his ship and his plantation. But it oh. does say the tagline is the bold, tempestuous romance of a kidnapped and ravished aristocratic girl. Is she aristocratic? No. I don't think she's aristocrat. No. She has no ties to nobility. <laughs> no. It's okay. Good tagline. Good tagline. Right. Well, I mean, that's the thing I genuinely don't understand. Because, like, even in mass media that isn't a romance, there's always a side romance. Marvel yeah, movies people love the romances, too. But they, for some reason, hate the lesser. Yeah. I mean, why do we have a romantic category now that's separate from fantasy? For good reads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's all those comments. are like, oh, thank God we don't have to have. Sarah J. Mass or whatever. I was like, when's the last time one of your fantasy books went as viral as Fourth Wing? Hmm. I know, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it makes me so mad that just because it's a romance, it makes it like lesser than. Yeah. And I'm like, well, sorry, your books aren't as popular as. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, the romanticy sweeps the fantasy category every single year. Maybe you need to do a little reflecting and not getting mad. <laughs> yeah, romance is the top selling genre, but it's the one that consistently gets the most hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, I know. I don't think we've read. Um, I don't think I have. They do. It's the highest selling genre. Yeah. Every year with, and not even, it's not even close. Like it, that's the thing. It's like, it's not even close. I think it'll be interesting, though, to see, like, because Fourth Wing, I feel like, just came out of nowhere because um, I remember I went to Denver in March and Rebecca Euros was there and I saw her and that's where I got an arc of Fourth Wing. She's just had him sitting there. She's like, here, like, oh, yeah. coming out. And then all of a sudden it just, like, popped and went off. And that was, like, six months ago. That was, like, not that long ago when it started becoming popular. So I wonder, like, next year if, like, what's going to be the big thing, if there's going to be anything like that. Yeah, it's been a while since a book, like, like any book went viral like that. Like, it's comparable to, like, Twilight and Fifty Shades. Yeah. You think? I mean, Sergei Mass. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. It's funny because, now we're just going off topic, but it was, it was funny because, so when Iron Flame came out, um, my pre-order... I didn't like that Iron Flame, by the way, but my pre-order was um, delayed and I wanted to read it. So I went the like 10 minutes after my Target opened in hopes that they would have some copies. They did. I grabbed a copy. I was super excited. It was the last one on the shelf. I'm walking into my office, um, getting like into the elevator. And one of my coworkers who also reads romance was there. And I was like, oh my God, look what I found. I'm so excited. I can't wait to read it on my lunch. And there were two girls like in the elevator also that I'm not too familiar with. And they were like, are you excited about a book? And I was like, well, yeah, like it just came out today. And they were like, oh my gosh, that's totally unrelatable. And in my head, I was like, do you know how many people are searching for this book right now? Yeah, anyways, I just thought, I thought we were over the phase of reading isn't cool. Like, at least TikTok did that, where yeah. reading yeah. is cool. Like, how many students I had at, near the end of when I was teaching that were genuinely so excited about books. I mean, they were reading romance that they should not have been reading at that age, <laughs> but <laughs> they genuinely, like, reading was cool. Yeah. I well, like I mean, as large as book talk is, it's not that large, because it, that's what made me realize it. And they legit were like, oh, my God, what a nerd. And I was like... <laughs> crying <laughs> and they were it was two people from my hr department too which is even funnier report I, no, literally i looked at them i was like i feel like y'all are bullying me who do i report <laughs> hr is bullying me that's surprising 
but but also like this could be um I always I do hate it when they're like I haven't read a book since fifth grade I was like that does not make you look cool yeah <laughs> look it cool. is um but I do think that um like this is also could be like a gateway to reading for people flame of the flower like maybe they weren't readers before i mean that's like what 50 shades did what twilight did is people were and i guess fourth wing like people who aren't huge readers were i was thinking colleen hoover too get into the reading genre and then start picking everything up wow this is dedication i love it i've absolutely charged an expensive special edition to a credit card just not even thinking about it. 100%. Uh, yeah. They need to pick up a book. They're fun. I agree with this. I'm not a huge fantasy reader, and I do get a little bored sometimes with, like, high, high fantasy. I mean, it's, like, Way of Kings. Brandon yeah. Sanderson. Mm. Did you actually read it? Like I read the whole thing. The thousand-page book. <laughs> oh. The by Patrick Rolfes. I read that, too. I need romance to make it interesting. Yeah. I mean, same. Um, do we want to talk about our next book? Yes, I'm actually excited about our next book. I don't have it with me. Do you have it? Do you have it with you? Yeah. I think this okay. is the one, right? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Joanna Lindsay. Yeah. So in this one, she's supposed to be kidnapped. So the guy sent to bring her back, the knight is sent to bring her back. The guy wants to kidnap her. And she's like, no, this isn't happening. Why don't you marry me instead so he can't kidnap me? And that's the romance. I'm a Johanna Lindsay stan, so I cannot wait. I have high expectations. Yeah. He's I just want to find one that I love as much as Gentle Rogue. But I don't know. We'll see. Hearts of Flame was so good. Yeah, we really like that one. So good. I have to read the parent story. I have to read so many of hers. There's one where, like, um, one of them kidnaps one of them and lets him go. And in retaliation, then, they decide to kidnap the other one. Like, mm. And it sounds fun. Yeah. I mainly like her Mallory Anderson series. That That's my favorite yeah. series by her. But I love her. I, I definitely love her books. So I'm excited. Yeah. Well, that one will probably have our live show in the new year, though. So... Yay! I'm excited. I'm excited. And it's, he's got like purple tights on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he does. I love her dress. Oh, that is so cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like these covers, you just do not get more iconic. Mm -hmm. And the raised embossing too. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Foiled embossing. They just Why don't, don't they do, do that, that anymore? anymore? It's so annoying. Yeah. Like it's how that ugly shiny sticker part on it, and sometimes we don't even get that. No, mm -hmm. but even like for Iron Flame, there's nothing stamped on the cover, and I was, like, you know how quick that would be to make those. Like, they were crushing it though. Yeah, the production value of that was trash. But I was thinking of Colleen Hoover for It Ends with Us. They didn't did they didn't do anything. No, like just black. Just yeah, flat. her old ones it would have raised text. Yeah. The special edition that Morgan Elizabeth has for, like, that Bradley Reed book had the emboss, like, the foiling, yeah. and that was so pretty. I have that spelled at the bottom there. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at it. That's why I thought of it. I love this Whoa. so much. I am obsessed with that. That is so... I freaking love that book, man. This is the one I want to read. Prisoner of My Desire. That's the revenge one. one. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. one's kidnapped and then let go, and so then they go back and kidnap them in revenge. <laughs> so good those are the plots i need like give me those yeah yeah maybe we'll read it next year we've read a lot of joanna Lindsay though I don't know she's the classic i feel like her and beverly jenkins are like our go-to's we're like we don't know what to read this month we're yeah. picking one of those <laughs> yeah all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for the live show. Thank you, Lacey, for joining us. I'm excited that a lot of you liked this book. And sorry we got off on a tangent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we will see everybody in the new year, probably, at the very end of the month. We'll see, depending on plans. But, yeah. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.